victim are now learning the identity of that victim. According to UMass Lowell, he was a student there drowning here at the Deerfield River yesterday. Now, police also recommend removing one of your wheels or even the seat in addition to locking your bike to prevent it from being stolen. The motel's management refuses to comment, but nearby residents and those tenants who have been staying inside say they found heroin needles and bed bugs inside. What's typically a thriving local cafe now empty with just construction materials laying on the tables and the owners left in a mess. Now, one of the most emotional impact statements was read by one of the mothers of Caleb's two children. She was six months pregnant when he was shot and killed. She and Caleb's mother asking for all the violence in the city to stop. This is one of those broken fire hydrants covered in a burlap sack. And when fire broke out here Tuesday night, it didn't work. That illegal rooming house is located right here behind me on Calhoun Street in the city's north end. It's since been condemned, but the tenants who have called it home for years are now being paid to move. Located off of Plainfield Street, the proposed site for that facility is near many homes, even a hospital, which have many families concerned. The mayor stopped by the motel this morning and said because of our reports, he's now looking to shut this place down. Today, those officers tackled two more apartments here here in the north end, the windows are covered and the lights are off inside the Route 9 Diner here in Hadley after 11 years in business. This all happening after a number of waitresses shared their stories of sexual harassment that they say happened right inside these doors. What a difference a year makes. Bright blue skies last year, cloudy, cold and rainy this year. But it's not stopping the 30,000 marathon runners from competing in today's race. This is the intersection where Michael Perez is accused of slamming into Joanne Dumas's car going 90 miles an hour. He was in court today while Dumas is at home recovering from the accident. There's a number of evidence markers. We see at least seven on the street, which is blocked off by yellow police caution tape. There's at least a dozen Springfield police officers in the area, two standing here by a blue duffel bag. If you look over here, we have a ton of fans anxiously awaiting to get some autographs. A truck plows into a school bus just after after three this afternoon. It was like an explosion. It was a green backpack that was left underneath a seat here at the Panera Bread in East Long Meadow. Police say, though, after investigation, it was just personal items that were left inside. Now, most of you guys know me as a health nut, but here at the fair, how can you not eat something fried, right? And they say that there's no such thing as a diet once you walk through that gate. So Just throw that out the window. <laughs> We're going to try some fried cookie dough. This is Western Mass News at 6 p.m. Coverage you can count on. One man in custody tonight in connection with the fatal shooting in Pittsfield. Good evening, I'm Michelle Kingston. The house was abandoned. The investigation was conducted by the fire marshal's office and Palmer police. Trapped in a trench as water filled up around him, a construction worker tragically lost his life while on the job in Longmeadow. The party of the year is already getting started in the heart of Manhattan. Hundreds of thousands of people are streaming in to watch the ball drop over Times Square and to turn the page on a new year was hoping to make it to San Francisco, but never made it off the East Coast. Wow, what a sad story there. I think uh, we can all agree that we hope that it rusts in peace. Um, <laughs> don't laugh at that. You're just encouraging me. Yeah, no air conditioning, right? No air conditioning. I'll keep that off. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We'll be back tonight at 6. This week is up next. Have a great day. It's a popular restaurant in Springfield, a small cafe tucked away from the hustle and bustle of downtown. The old Armory Grill is unique in how it's run, entirely by inmates. Yeah, these men and women serving time in western Massachusetts while now also getting an education in the culinary arts, preparing for a career that could be available to them once they're released. Western Mass News reporter Michelle Kingston picks up the story. Flipping burgers, frying eggplant, serving fries. 861 will be your total out of 10. 139. About a dozen inmates whose identities are concealed because they're still serving time are running the old armory grill in downtown Springfield. We're dicing up tomatoes for the cold wraps and cold sandwiches. These offenders are nearing the end of their sentences and were given the opportunity to work in a kitchen serving people in a nine-to-five day job. Order up. 
The restaurant gives them a chance to be outside of their cells and in the real world, even just for 40 hours a week. The woman behind the register has another year in jail ahead of her. I'm incarcerated because of a mistake that I've done in my life. is something that happened. The man behind the scenes prepping food served time at the House of Corrections and is now in rehabilitation at the Western Massachusetts Correctional Alcohol Center. To put it bluntly, I'm here because I let my addiction take over and I made the wrong choices in life. I just, my life became un unmanageable. I became, I let it take over. The restaurant secured by Corporal Marion Albin. We treat them like regular workers. We don't treat them like they're inmates. Um, we don't refer to them as inmates. The kitchen is supervised by Jack Curley, a former chef. Uh, our, my function here is to give them the skills, the tools, and the confidence to go out and find a job. Is it hard to believe? Where sometimes, yeah, sometimes it's, it is a little bit tough at times. Working in the restaurant is a chance to learn a new skill, start over, and become a productive member of society. The inmates say they're humbled and grateful for the opportunity to earn just $5 a day, a stipend provided by the Sheriff's Department. It makes me forget about being where I'm at. So it's, it's the outside, it's, it's a new start, and I really like it. I feel normal. I feel like a human. A lot of them never had job skills. They never held jobs, um, and now they're feeling good about themselves. And the customers continue to come back day after day to be served by the inmates who have really become friends. I have to say, sometimes I, I talk to these people and I'm going like, what happened to them that they wound up in this situation? It's hard to know, because they seem to be wonderful people. Levin is a change. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. I found myself coming down here a couple of times a week and I didn't really know the fullness of the program. And I would watch them, like, for the very first time, start being a cashier, yeah. you know, and they're nervous. 86% of the inmates involved in the program are hired in restaurants after they're released, even though most have never worked in a restaurant before. My little input may have straightened out more than one life because if mom and dad do well, kids do well. With each burger flipped and every salad chopped, they're one step closer to turning their lives around. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Michelle Kingston, Western Mass News. A nice story. Well, each one of the inmates involved in the program leaves serve safe certified. So. No, yeah, they are 10 times <laughs> yeah. faster. They're also given the opportunity to further ed their education in culinary arts by attending Holyoke Community College on Saturdays to train with chefs at the school. I had no idea this restaurant I, was downtown. I didn't either. I didn't either. It's a great program, though. It's nice. It really is. You hear good things about it. So, yeah. And I, I hear the food's good. Oh, now I got to go. Now we got to go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Today, those officers tackled two more apartments here in the North End, both owned by the same man who ran the illegal rooming house on Calhoun Street. Now, those buildings here behind me, these apartments filled with mice, cockroaches, and people living in cramped, failing spaces. Police! Hey, Code enforcement, open the door, please. Two buildings side by side on Medford and Main Streets in the city's north end. Gas, electric, everything was faulty inside there. Both illegal apartments now being condemned by the city after police and code enforcement officers find unlivable conditions inside. He doesn't fix this stuff. You guys are in danger. Mice, feces, spider webs, cockroaches. You got hot water? It's a big violation. Faulty wiring and not a single smoke detector found. If a fire ever broke out here, the people on the third floor all would be dead. And there's a little kid up there. The city now stepping up to make sure the tenants are safe. We're all just trying to get by off of our minimum wage jobs. The owner, Sam Castellano, was in court yesterday because of the illegal rooming house he operated on Calhoun Street. Officers today said the gas here on Medford and Main Street will be shut off immediately. Between the two buildings, at least 17 residents. We haven't got into the second floor there. There could be any number that are living inside there. Since 1992, the jail is operated in Ludlow off Randall Road with barbed wire, 16 foot fences and dozens of correctional officers throughout the property. Officials tell me today that while they're not surprised the escape in New York happened, their facility is secure. This is a typical inmate living unit or inmate pot. 
Chief of Security John Smith showing Western Mass News one of the many dormitories at the Hamden County Correctional Center. The officer has complete line of sight um, with every inmate in the pod. Nearly 900 inmates are currently confined here, 28 alleged murderers awaiting trial, and about 40 living here in these cells in Pod B. They are rooms secured by locks, correctional officers monitoring 24-7, daily cell inspections, weekly evaluations. We've designed for better visibility. Escapes like what was seen at the Clinton Correctional Facility in New York hard for these officers to comprehend. With constant contact, watch, security, even ventilation contained just within the building with no way out. They would still have to get out of the building and then out of the perimeter over the fence. That fencing 16 feet tall, topped by razor wire. Every 90 seconds, an officer making a loop around the facility's perimeter. An eye always on the inmates. Captain Karen Pitts is the head of training at the jail. She's not shocked to see that prisoners escaped in New York. I'm not surprised because there's always that human element. You can't predict who is going to do this. She trains correctional officers professional boundaries, warning them of too much inmate interaction. Because it may be, you know, can I have a piece of that gum you're chewing? You give them that piece of gum and now they've got you. The red flags, the warnings from New York to jails across the country are what Pitts hopes prevents what happened in New York from happening here in western Massachusetts. We're always watching to see, you know, has a per somebody's personality changed? Because there are indicators. Now some key differences from the New York prison to the one here in Ludlow. New York's is surrounded by walls, not fence, and the jail itself is the old linear style cells versus the pods we see here on Randall Road. Now coming up at 6, we'll tell you the lessons the Hampton County Jail has learned from issues in the past. Live in the studio, Michelle Kingston, Western Mass News. The photo shared 1,000 times online today of a Springfield teacher doing all he can to help his student graduate. I love the story. Mr. Guy is a well-known teacher at Central High School in Springfield who's helped dozens of students succeed as a graduation coach. Now, the photo taking off online shows him holding a student's baby so she can focus in class. Western Mass News reporter Michelle Kingston sat down with that teacher today, joins us in the studio now with this story. Michelle? Yeah, more than 1,000 shares, 3,000 likes, and 110 comments and counting from students and their families whose lives have been touched, even saved by Mr. Guy, a beloved teacher at Central High School. Teachers are the real MVP, Kimmy Lopez posted on social media, sharing a photo of a professor holding a student's child who started to cry in class, next to a photo of a Springfield Central High School teacher, Mr. Guy, who did the same for her two years ago. She was a very focused um, student. Uh, she knew what she wanted to do, so we wanted to help her the, the best way we could. Kimmy was living in a shelter with her infant at the time and needed to complete a few more classes to graduate, but couldn't afford daycare. In that program, we actually had a playpen in the in the room. You know, he was he was a piece of cake to be there. So he's like he he enjoyed being there. Like he knew his mother was doing something special. Mr. Guy holding her son in class, as seen in this photo, doing all he could to lead her and all of his students to their high school diploma. What did you think when you saw this picture today? I mean, quite honestly, it didn't surprise me at all. I mean, that's just who he is. Whether it's going to pick a kid up to come to school or bring somebody home, just something that he does. Kimmy graduated and so did dozens of other students through this re-engagement diploma program. Many of them commenting on the photo today praising their teacher that offered students at risk of not graduating another chance. Mr. Guy even driving through the city to find students who have dropped out, asking them to come back and graduate. You'll see kids, where's Mr. Guy? Where's Mr. Guy? Even days when he's not here, we're just like, he's not here today, guys. You know, come back tomorrow. So he's definitely someone who everyone looks for. And even outside of Central. So kids in Putnam, SciTech, Commerce, they call here because they need his advice or they need his help. Mr. Guy with this message to his former student. Kimberly, keep up, keep up the great work. Um, you know, we're all proud of you. Everyone that worked with you and knows you is very proud of you, and I appreciate the shout out. And I'm happy to report that Kimmy is now in culinary school in Atlanta. She and her son Javier are thrilled that this photo took off.
giving Mr. Guy the recognition he deserves. Live in the studio, Michelle Kingston, Western Mass News.